worship the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, you know there's power in the blood of Jesus. Shout the praise unto our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wonder working power. Amen. In the blood of the Lamb. So good out. We are this afternoon, so good I am to greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good to have everyone here this evening with us to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. Jesus is wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. And I am excited that someone will know that they could trust him. You can tell him what you need. Amen. You can cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. Amen. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Amen. He loved us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Amen. So much that he came and he died for us. Give your hands one more time and give God thanks for us. His love. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. Thank you for paying the price. Amen. So it's good. To be here, amen. Good to have Pastor here this evening. And he's going to minister the words of the Lord to us. And so let us all stand as we are going to welcome Pastor oh, Dibble, you, amen, to this pulpit. And he's going to minister the word of the Lord to our hearts. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, It's good to be here. Why don't you go ahead and be seated? Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> And I want um, to be talking to you today from the book of John, chapter number 11. I won't, uh, you don't have to do any scripture, any verses or anything. I'm just going to kind of jump around a little bit and, and uh, see where the Lord leads us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, I want to talk to us just a little bit about how we approach God. How we approach God. The book of John chapter number 11 says uh, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Anybody remember about Lazarus? Yes, sir. And uh, he was of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha. We know the story of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Verse number two gives us a parenthetical statement and it wants us to know exactly which Mary the scripture is talking about here. So it says it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. It was that Mary. There's other Marys the scripture talks about so it wants just to point out to us which particular Mary this is talking about. Right. Amen. So we he see here that uh, Lazarus is sick. He's in the town of Bethany, we see here. And also it talks to us about Mary and, and Martha. Now, uh, if you read in the, the book of Luke, chapter number 10, I believe it is, is our first introduction with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. It was when Jesus comes to their home in Bethany. And uh, how many remember the story? Um, everybody's sitting around the feet of Jesus. And Martha's in the kitchen. She's, she's uh, cooking up uh, stuff for everybody to eat, right? And you, you've heard that story before. That's the first introduction that we have. Now, apparently, Jesus has been here before. He knows this family. We're going to read in just a minute that he loves this family, this right. particular family. But we see something, and it relates to the context of what's happening here in John chapter 11, which happens another time. So we're introduced to Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and in our first introduction, um, Jesus comes along. Now, if you know something about the custom of the day, if somebody came by to visit your house, it was customary. I think Sister Bell was from this time. <laughs> in Bible times, because when you visit Sister Bell, she always wants to feed you and put something in front of you. You know, you came by my house, I want to give you something to eat. Yes. Um, and so in that day, it was the custom and it was their responsibility 
to take care of the guests that came by. You put a bowl of water out for them to wash their feet. They had sandals in that day or didn't have any shoes at all and the ground was dusty. Things weren't paved back in that time and so when you came to someone's house your feet were dirty. So it was custom to put a bowl of water out for them to wash their feet and get cleaned up a little bit and it was the custom to give them something to eat. Now how many know also there were no cell phones back in that day. So Jesus probably didn't uh, get his phone out. Hey, hey Martha, uh, you know, me and the disciples are on our way and we're going to be through coming through town now. And so we want to give you four warnings so you can prepare ahead of time. Maybe call Domino's and have a bunch of pizza ready for us when we get there so it's not too hard on you. We want to give you a little forewarning. So Jesus comes along without any forewarning, and his disciples are with him. Right. Now, how many know when Jesus went around, it wasn't just the disciples that gathered. There were crowds that gathered around Jesus. So it could be that there, were, there was quite a crowd in Martha's home that right. day. And Jesus is there teaching. Now, something unique happens. Mary... Now, also, if you know something about the custom of the day, women were, this is not what I believe, okay? Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm telling you about the custom of the day. Women, most times, were property or were considered second class to the point that in the synagogue, there was a place where the teacher sat in the middle and the men were permitted to sit around the teacher and ask questions. The women were not permitted to be in that room, but were permitted to be in a room off to the side, and they were not permitted to ask questions. Now, how many are glad that's not the way it is today, right? right? Jesus said, whoever you are, just come. But something, I want you to notice, something significant happens here in this first encounter that we read about in Scripture. Somehow... Mary has found her way to the feet of Jesus. She is not supposed to be there, but somehow she finds her way to the feet of Jesus and she's right there receiving what he is teaching. And this made Martha mad. So, just in case you didn't realize it, Jesus... I want to tattletale on my younger sister who's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's supposed to be in the kitchen helping me to prepare the food for you, Jesus. It's your fault you brought all these people here. This is the context of what's going on here. But Jesus doesn't rebuke Mary. He says, Martha, I see your skills. I see how you, you're you good at getting everything in order and you're good at organizing everything and if you're off in the kitchen and you feel like somebody should recognize you. Can I tell you, if you're serving in the kingdom of God just for someone to recognize you, you have the wrong heart, the wrong motive. Right, right, right. But if you're serving in the kingdom of God just to serve him and you don't care who sees or who doesn't see, you have the right heart and the right motive. You won't always be recognized serving in the kingdom of God. So he doesn't just disregard Martha's gifts. He said, I'm thankful for what you're doing. But Mary chose the better part. She chose the good part. She's where she's supposed to be, and I'm not going to bother her. Right. Now, something I thought about just today. Uh, we, we read in Scripture, you're familiar with the feeding of the 5,000, mm-hmm. right? And the feeding of the 4,000 happened in two different occasions where Jesus just had a little bit. One time, five loaves and two fishes. And he blessed it and break it. And everybody was filled. Filled. Not just had a little bit, but was filled. Have you ever eaten just the right amount? There's maybe one or two times that's ever happened to me. Most of the times I overeat just, I eat about two or three 
bites further than I should have, and I'm overfilled. Yes. There's sometimes when I was I was less left wanting a little bit more, but have you ever had just the right amount? And you sit back and say, Oh, that was good. I'm filled. Every one of the 5,000 men plus women and children was filled. When Jesus shows up and when he supplies, you're going to be filled. Come on, somebody. I, I, I didn't say you, you'd want a little bit more or you'd be short just a little bit. I said if you partake of what Jesus is giving you, you are going to be filled. Your life will be satisfied. So I can't help but wonder, what if, if Martha said, Jesus just ministered to me a word. It went right over her head in the scripture. But what if she received that word and she said, you know, Jesus just ministered to me and, and he told me my sister who I thought was out of place and in the wrong place, he just told me she was in the right place. What if I put down the pots and pans in the kitchen and stopped worrying about how am I going to feed all these people and just got down at the feet of, well, if it's good for Mary, it's good for me too. And I got down at the feet of Jesus. I just said, Jesus, give me what I need. Can, can you just think with me what might have happened? And Jesus just could have snapped his fingers. How many know he's more than enough? Yes, sir. And there's nothing impossible with God. But what could have happened if Martha just said, I, I, I'll leave all the details to Almighty God. God. I'll leave all the details. To, in fact, he's the one that sprung this on me anyway. So I'll just leave the details in his hands. I'll let him do what he's going to do. And I want to receive what he's giving out to them. Could it be that Martha bypassed a miracle that Jesus wanted to do? Could it be that we bypass miracles in our own lives that Jesus wants to accomplish because we're so busy trying to work out all the details? How's this going to happen? How's that going to I know God called me to do this. I know God wants me to get involved in the church a little more. I know God wants me to start this ministry or that ministry. Or God wants me to do this or that. But I don't know how it's going to happen. I try to work it out in my mind, but it doesn't seem to be working just right. And can't you see Jesus... They're not where they're supposed to be. They're not helping me do what you called me to do. And I'm upset. Can we have sometimes maybe a little Martha inside of us? Now that's not my message. But that's just a little context as to what's going on. So this is the family here. In verse 3 it says, uh, of John 11, therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, him or he whom thou lovest is sick. Somehow Mary and Martha got a message to Jesus. They sent some messengers to wherever Jesus was and got him the message that. Lazarus, the one that you love, you've been associated with our family before. You've been by here before. We have a relationship together. Lazarus, that one that you love, is sick. Remember now, there's nothing impossible with Jesus. He can do anything he wants to do, right? Right? When Jesus heard that, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Right. So he says a curious statement to us because we know the end of the story. Lazarus did die. But he says clearly, this sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. It's so that people will see who I am. It's so people will have a revelation of who I am. 
I'm not just a good teacher going about doing good things. I'm Almighty God. That's right. Thank you, Lord. And so you don't misunderstand. Verse 5 says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he rushed right up, got his stuff together, and went to go see Lazarus. No, that's not what the scripture says. It says, when he heard that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He didn't move a muscle. He didn't seem like do anything to help Mary, Martha, or Lazarus. When he heard that he was sick, he just stayed still. How many have ever been there before? In the context of your problem, mm -hmm. in the context of your misery, in the context of your pain, and it seems like Jesus is not doing anything. He could, and that's what makes us mad. He could. He can calm the waters. He can heal the blind, cause the lame to walk. In fact, he's already raised the widow's son of Maine from the dead, stopped the funeral procession in its tracks. He's already healed Jairus' daughter, brought them both back from the dead. But Jesus says, I'm just going to stay here for a couple of more days. Let me just see how this all plays out. Let me just see what happens here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go right now. He could have, yeah. but he didn't. Don't forget that verse, verse number four. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. So he stayed several more days. Verse 7 says, Then after that saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. Oh, Jesus. And his disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, uh, and, and you want to go back there. Jesus says some other stuff. Now, dropping down to verse number 11, These things said he, after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And so the disciples, okay. Oh, we were feeling the pressure a little bit. We were wondering, what in the world? Why aren't you moving yet, Jesus? Why aren't you going? The messenger came, and, and the, the word came from Mary and Martha. Lazarus, your friend that you love is sick. It's serious. We wouldn't send you message if it wasn't serious. You've got to come right now. But Jesus, you've been just sitting here for two whole days. And now you get up and you say, well, let's, let's go there again. And, and, and let's go over to where he was. And, and uh, then he, you, you say to us, Lazarus is just sleeping. And we're just going to awake him out of sleep. And all the disciples said, oh, if he sleep, he shall do well. If he's just sleeping, everything's going to be okay. Howbeit, verse 13, Jesus spake of his death, and they thought that he had spoken of taking rest in sleep. You know, he's, he's sick, he's just resting. He's getting his strength back. He, how many know when you get sick, sometimes if you try to jump back up and do everything you did before, it takes it out of you a little bit. You've got to get some rest to get well. Verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad. Have you ever been there before? Lazarus is dead. Jesus, you could have come. You've been just sitting around for two whole days. Uh, the, the need was serious. You could have come before this time. Lazarus, he said, is dead. And I am glad 
for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. They still didn't understand what was going on. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave, talking about Lazarus, in the grave four days already. Not only did Jesus not come when he was supposed to come, according to Mary and Martha, not only did Jesus not come when he was required to come, and, but he sat around for a couple of days, and then on top of that, he took his time getting there because he's already four days in the grave by the time he shows up. I don't know what the, the custom of that day was if, if they put him in the grave on that first day that he dies or, or if they had a funeral or if they, what, what they did. But I do know this, four days he's been in the grave already. Now, this is going to make you mad. Verse 18, Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. Anybody know how many 15 furlongs is? It's about two miles. What? So near. Jesus, you were only two miles away? You mean you could have come right in the middle of my dilemma? You could have been here right in the middle of my problem? You were only two miles away? How, many does it, how long does it take you to walk two miles? If he couldn't have gotten a horse or a camel or something, a donkey to ride on, how long does it take you to walk two miles? What was How much? A half hour. Sister Bell is fast. It'll take me longer than that. Let, let's say he just walked one mile an hour. It would have only taken him two hours, just a couple of hours to get there. He could have made it faster than that. Surely, if he had known the problem, surely he would have been walking a little faster because I want to get there. I want to be able to touch Lazarus. I love Lazarus. I love Martha and Mary. I'm close to this family. I want to be there right in the context of their dilemma. Why didn't he come? Why did he delay? What was it that he was trying to teach us here? Why is this story included in Scripture? Well, we know one of the reasons why it's not a sickness unto death, but it's for the glory of God. Now, Lazarus did die, right? So it must be talking about something other than it's not a sickness unto death because Lazarus died. But could it be that God wants to use the situations that we go through in this life for a greater purpose? Could it be that God can take the stuff that we go through and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Could it be that God can take the, 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 the stuff in our life that we're not happy with, that, that we wish hadn't happened? Could it be that God can take that stuff and he can work right in the middle of that stuff? He's only two miles away. He could have come if he wanted to. He could have been here. So my question to you today is how do you approach Jesus? When stuff happens that we don't like, when things happen that we wish had happened differently, how do you approach Jesus? He's only two miles away. He could have come if he wanted to. He could have been there. How do you approach Jesus? 
Verse 19 says, Many of the Jews came to Mary and Martha, and they began to comfort them concerning their brother. They knew what the problem was. They knew that Mary and Martha was going through some things right there. How do you approach Jesus? Then Martha, verse 20, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. She did not know Jesus was on the way. Martha somehow hears 